Alrighty then, here's a question about an unequal arm balance and maybe you can pause the video for a second, go read the question and come back. And hopefully after you've read the question you realize that this unequal arm balance, the way it works, you put a heavy object on this hook and then you support this hook somehow by either, you know, putting a bolt to the wall or holding it in your hand or something. And then you move this balance weight until this system is balanced, the two arms are balanced, and then knowing the torques that these two things generate, you can calculate based on the arm length, you can calculate how heavy this object is knowing the balance weight that is given. Okay, so um, the first question is asking about the weight of the heaviest object that this balance can weigh. So to to find that out, then I'm going to draw the free body diagram of this balance. And the heavy object is always hanging from here and it has some weight W. And what I want to know here is the maximum value for this W. And then eight centimeters away, there's the support. And I'm gonna assume that the force due to the support is actually acting upwards on the balance. I think this is a good assumption, but um, I don't have to be married to it. If it turns out that the force is equal is negative, then that means that it's pointing downwards. And then the balance weight can be anywhere on here. I imagine it's gonna be at the very tip here for the maximum weight, but I can just put it anywhere I want knowing that the maximum distance here could be 1.2 meters. And I'm gonna call this the lever arm for this force, which is the force due to gravity on the balance weight. And I'm gonna call this lever arm L2. And we'll see that we need these lever arms when we're calculating the torque. Okay, we'll see how this comes into play. But the first thing that I notice is that this thing reaches equilibrium um, to, re to make the reading for the, for the heavy weight. So in equilibrium, what I know is that if it's in equilibrium in the y direction, meaning there is no acceleration in the y direction, then the net force in y has to be equal to zero. If it's also rotationally in equilibrium, meaning this balance is not tipping one way or the other, that means that the net torque is going to be equal to zero. Okay, and of course the net force in x is also equal to zero, but because there are no forces in the x direction at all, then that's a trivial equation, that's a redundant equation. Okay, so how do I calculate the torque? To remind myself, I need the torque, the contribution from each force to the torque is going to be equal to that force multiplied by its lever arm, and that lever arm is always measured from the pivot to the line of action of the force. And that typically the convention is that counterclockwise is positive for a torque, and its units is Newton times meters. So if I want to, for example, calculate the torque around this pivot right here, this is what I'm going to call the pivot, then I know that the net torque around that pivot is going to be equal to zero because it's rotationally in equilibrium. And the contribution to that net torque is the, um, the contribution from the weight, first of all, and to figure out which direction it is, you can put your thumb of the right hand right on the pivot and then see that the weight is actually going to be turning Gonna, the torque due to the weight is going to try to turn this balance in this direction and if your thumb is going out of the paper that's positive or you could also see that it's trying to go counterclockwise and that's positive so the contribution from the weight is going to be the weight the force multiplied by its lever arm which is measured from the pivot to the line of action of the force so that's L2 so that's the contribution from the weight the contribution from the support force, the force is actually passing right through the pivot. So its lever arm is gonna be equal to zero. So then this support force is not gonna give me any torque around the pivot. Just like trying to push a door from its hinge. It's just, it's not gonna create any torque. 
And then the other contribution is going to be due to this force, the force of the balance multiplied by its lever arm. But then now its contribution is going to be negative because my thumb is going to be in the paper for my right hand or you can just think of it as trying to rotate it clockwise around that pivot. And rotating clockwise around the pivot is negative contribution. And that's it. There's no more torque contribution, so that's equal to zero. And this is how you would calculate what the weight is of the heavy object is then you manipulate this at Fg times L1 to both sides and then divide both sides by L2 you get this equation for W and of course if you want the maximum weight then then Fg is constant because that's just the weight of the balance and that's actually 5 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity 9.8 meter per second squared and that's 49 newtons, right? Five times 10 roughly is 50, but I'm left with a fifth, 0.2 multiplied by five is one, so 49 newtons. And so that's constant. And then L1 can vary from zero all the way to 1.2 meters. So I'm gonna call that 1.2 meters L1 max. So that would give me the maximum weight because L2 is fixed at eight centimeters. So then that's equal to 49 Newtons multiplied by L1 over L2 max, L1 max over L2. This I can put in meters or in centimeters, it doesn't matter because I'm dividing the two by each other. So they just have need to be the same unit. Um, we can say 1.2 meters over 0.08 meters or 120 centimeters over 8 centimeters. 120 over 8 is 15 because well 80 over 8 is 10 and then 40 over 8 is 5 so 120 over 8 is 15. 15 times 49 15 times 5 is 75 at a 0 and then subtract 1 times 15 so that's 735 newtons So that's the maximum possible weight and that's when you hang the balance arm, the balance weight right at the tip of the balance arm. Okay, so that's what was required for part A. The question for part B is asking, what is the maximum possible force exerted by the balance on the support? So in other words, what is this maximum possible value for the force on the support FS and to get the maximum possible value for FS of course you have to hang the maximum possible weight here and this weight is the same all the time and you just look at the equilibrium in the y direction the net force in the y direction has to be equal to zero so that anything in the positive y which I'm going to pick to be up minus everything that's in the negative y is going to be equal to zero so then that means that the maximum force on the support is equal to the maximum weight that we've just calculated plus the force due to gravity on the balance force. So that's 735 newtons plus the 49 newtons. So that's roughly 50, so that's 785 minus 1784 newtons. And that's the answer.